been a while since I performed here at the festival. A lot has gone on in my life since I was here last. I got married. I have children now. And um, thank you. You know what that means. And uh, I was out at a club last night, and I realized I have no pickup lines left. I mean, I don't need them. Everything's fine. But I've been trained as a husband for so long that even if my wife left me, I have nothing. <laughs> if my wife split tonight, I would just be staggering up to women in bars. Hi, I uh, couldn't help but notice you were sitting there alone, and uh, I thought you might have a list of chores and errands you wanted me to run. <laughs> It's going to be a beautiful day tomorrow. Why don't I break out the convertible, swing by your place, drive your mom to the mall? <laughs> you like? <laughs> then she can complain about your dad and yell at me when I agree with her. Hmm? <laughs> but uh, we do have children. We have two girls. Our daughters are from China. They're adopted. And when we first told a really good friend of ours that we were adopting from China, our really good friend said, are you going to teach them English? And I said, yeah. <laughs> you ever done that? Sometimes somebody says something really stupid without thinking, and you calculate how much time it will take to argue and disagree, and decide to just go along with them and then treat yourself to an ice cream sandwich? <laughs> well, you know why there's global warming. Gay marriage. <laughs> You're right. Man, I love ice cream sandwiches. <laughs> but I do have a piece of advice for the guys in the audience tonight. Just a little thing, jot it down. Your one trick to a successful marriage, this is all you need to know. Never, ever, ever finish this sentence. I'll tell you what I frickin' think. And you're done. <laughs> no one has ever gotten any by finishing that sentence. There's no pot of gold at the end of that thought. <laughs> like my father, I have two basic emotions, rage and suppressed rage. <laughs> my father is a very interesting guy. A lot of people say that he's bigoted and racist, but in his defense, a lot of those people aren't white. <laughs> but to his credit, my dad will come up with racial hatreds that you didn't even know were racial hatreds. You'll hear him in the other room watching the news. Oh, there go the Belgians again. They're at it. They're worse than those you-know-whats from Upper Iceland. I got no time for that. Your blacks got all the sports and music. Your Latinos got your manual labor market all sewn up. The Japanese got everything you plug into the friggin' wall that lights up and buzzes. The only thing left for regular white people is topless bars and ventriloquism. That's all we have left now. And somebody better get me a dummy, because I ain't taking off my shirt. That is another thing I got from my father, a genetic inability to develop muscle tone. I barely eat, I work out all the time, I take off my shirt, I'm still built like a condom full of walnuts. <laughs> and obviously, coming from that environment growing up, I was a social train wreck for the first three decades of my life. I meet people I knew before I was 30. I just apologize and walk away. I'll give you an example. When I got married, I had to learn how to fight. Because I'm a very non-confrontational person, I don't like conflict. And my whole approach to marriage was very simple. My wife will do something that drives me insane. I won't say anything. And then, later, I'll die of cancer. But you can't, you gotta get in there and fight. But the big fights are never about the big things. The big fights are never about religion or politics. They're always about, you know, shopping. And my wife is a very clever woman. When she sends me to the store, she will often include on the list several items that don't exist. <laughs> Just to keep me out of the house and looking that much longer. And I end up wandering around the grocery store going, yeah, do you have any maple-flavored vodka pops. <laughs> I'm trying to find sunny harvest Lil Cobra bits. 
And then you come home and you have that full head of steam and it's whatever sets you off. You know, why did you buy cupcake mix and not buy cupcake tin liners? Because I'm not a flipping cupcake expert, that's why. You know who you married, my God. I buy my cupcakes made. I'm not out there making my own cupcakes like some kind of wild animal. But you know, for all the argument, it still comes down to those little moments. Like just the other day, I think my wife really summed it up the best when she turned to me and she said, you know, Dana, you might not be the smartest guy in the world. You might not be the funniest guy in the world. You might not be the best looking guy in the world. That's all I wanted to say. <laughs> the end, good night. You Canadian bastards. I figured out a way to avoid the paparazzi when I check into a hotel, I check in under my own name. They'll never think of looking at me. Boom! Okay? There goes the laugh. Very nice. I went there. I was at the, I go to the airport, and I told the guy, I was like, hey, I'm going to Honduras. And the guy was like, what city? And I was like, I'm just learning right now that's not the name of the city. So, 